Hello, how are you doing? You may have seen just recently, I did a video on a tape. And the tape was this one. Boom, like that. Uh, that's CDMH. And how nice it was. It's a beautiful, I mean, the quality involved in this is, is absolutely superb. And um, there we go. You can see it's got a beautiful black rigid case there's no I mean, there is there are tapes and there's flex and there's no there's no flex in there uh, that's not going to give you any problems like that and it's got beautiful stickers and it's got uh, really nice double-sided j card and the whole thing feels quality there is no doubt about it this is a quality tape and then there was the problem. And the problem was, quite simply, that I put it into my machine and I documented that. And I also pointed out that I clean the machine every time I do these, these videos. Um, and what can I say? You know, it, it failed. I will bring up the display of what it came up with. This is what came off it when I did the tests. And as you can see, what came off it was pretty um, naff, really. This was what came off the tape. It went on perfectly fine. The VUs were reading equal levels. And you can see here we've got two different levels out. We've got here, um, the, the, they're not symmetrical. So this isn't a case of it's just a lower level. This is actually a different recording, which is particularly noticeable if you go into... If you zoom in and then have a look at the minus 20, um, there's the minus 20 on there, and there's the minus 20 on there. So that is not the same shape as that. Um, and when you look on the 0 dB frequency sweep, you can see there that is not a reproduction of that. It is it is along the right lines, but it's, it's not the same. And that was the music that was recorded on. And again, you can see it's not fluffy in the same places. It's not got the same things. It's not that is not just a smaller version of what's above it. So that was no good. But to prove it, what I did then was I flipped over the tape and recorded on the other side. Now I did start and stop this. this there's um, looking at there. I made sure. See, there's a big gap there. I made sure that the um, the heads and everything were engaged correctly that there wasn't a problem with it uh, mistracking as far as the you know, having misaligned itself with the guides. So having flipped it over, what I then did was, um, where's the type? Two? So this is the one now. This one was the same signal as trying to be recorded on the other side. I flipped the tape over, I rewound it, made sure everything was right, and it started recording, sounded okay. But listen to what we got. This is an actual recording playback from here. Listen. Nothing was altered. It just did that on its own. You hear that wowing? I think that's a clue as to what the problem is. And as you can see, the levels are totally wrong. There's nothing there. It's muffled. It's awful. So that was that one was ditched, and so the original was that one which was ditched. So now what I've had to do is I've had to repair the tape, or or at least to give it a, a fighting chance to work. So what I've got now is I've got this one. This is after I've done some work on the tape, and. Uh, because I think I should point out what had actually happened was the tape had some tram lines in it. It actually, the top of the tape was tram lined, bottom of the tape was slightly wrinkled. Uh, well, not, not wrinkled, but it's it stressed, should I say. So it was not happy. To do the second side, I actually rewound it. So there was technically um, recordings on both ends of the tape, you know, one way or the other. But what I did was I had to go at the tape, which I will show you in a separate video what I did. And this is the results I've got now. So this is quite simply playing, playing 
what was recorded and this is what it sounded like Notice the lack of wow on there, and we'll just skip forward on some of this. This is some by Patrick Patrick Hoss. Patrick Patrick Hoss. Sounds pretty good to me. And then we get on to some of the other bits here. There's your minus 20, Patrick Patrickos. What I then normally do is I show you the results of this. So let's have a look. This is the frequency response for this tape. And this is the way I normally do it. So I just plot the spectrum. Boom, there it is. It's got output up to 20 kilohertz. This is at zero dB, this particular trace. There's a bit of uh, variations there. But you can actually see this is this is a very good output. Let's go on to the minus 20. Bear in mind this is a metal tape, so it's a metal tape type 2. Go on to the minus 20, and we'll have a look there, analyze. Now you can see that's a, a better overall output, going up to, well, you know, you've got a signal all the way. But within spec, uh, 39, 42, dun, 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 dun. so you've got a, a reasonable output up to oh, 13K, and then it starts to hail off. But it means that it's doing its thing, and it's, it's doing it quite well. Let's have a look at the 1 kilohertz total harmonic distortion. Uh, or third harmonic distortion, should I say. Let's have a look at that. Now, this is quite high. This is 0 dB, as you can see here. And we've got a distortion on 3 kilohertz at minus 36. It's going to give you a little bit of shrillness, which I did notice on the playback. Let's have a go on the 3 kilohertz and have a look at that. And again, you've got uh, 9 kilohertz, which is the third harmonic and that's at 0 db and this is at minus 48 db so not quite as noticeable because it's high frequency but nevertheless it's there and we've looked at those things let's have a look at the lower levels this is the one kilohertz low level and you can see there it's beautiful so ideally you want to record even though this is a metal you want to record it at less than 0 dB peaking. And let's have a look at the 3 kilohertz. Again, there's no, no sign of the spike. One of the things I have on here is this tapered one. Let's just zoom in a bit on there because um, it makes it slightly easier for me, obviously. But we've got this. This is starting at minus 20 and going up to 0. So... Minus 20, I can't remember the steps, but let's go there and we can see what the level will be when we look at it. So we can pop it on there and we're starting to get the distortion there. So at minus 9 dB. So, but the gap is huge. Look, we've got minus 60 dB as being the actual level there and we've got 9 dB there. So therefore, we've got... 60, which I've got 0 d, uh, 9 dB there. We've got 60 dB there, so we've got 51 dB signal to noise ratio as far as the, the harmonic distortion is concerned. That's pretty good. We'll just go for a couple higher. Uh, let's, uh, let's try this one and um, have a look at that. As you can see, it's starting to close up now, so that's 3 dB there, and that is minus 45 so we're looking at 42 db difference so again ideally even though this is a metal tape and it will presumably take a pounding 
uh, it's not the best way of doing it. Um, let's have a look here. This is the maximum again. And have a quick look on there. And yeah, so now we've got a difference. That's plus one or two dB. Let's see what it actually says. It says it's plus um, 2.5 dB on there. And that is uh, minus 28 dB. So we've we've reduced the difference between the harmonic distortion figure, and you see there's another one there coming up at five kilohertz. It, we've we've reduced the level between them from big numbers to now it being two and a half, thirty. So. 27 dB is roughly, uh, if I've got the maths right, if you've got the maths wrong, then you can correct me for it. But uh, we're looking at uh, less than 30 dB difference on the high levels. Now, the, the way this works is that because it's a high level and your ears are being bashed, um, you're probably going to be not hearing the distortion because you're going to be you're going to be going deaf. Uh, if that doesn't work for you, you know, if you like to be able to hear the true sounds, then you're not really going to do yourself any benefits by going for the high level. That's what it amounts to. And then we've got the music there. As I say, I'll put that on separately as a track, which you can listen to. That's uh, It's from the YouTube library, and it's it's good. It's a good test because it means that you've actually got proper music with with signal noise ratio stuff that's the only thing i haven't looked at yet let's have a quick look at signal to noise ratio on a bit of clear tape so how quiet is this tape anybody want to take a bet on it i haven't looked yet this is my first time through so let's have a look plot spectrum and we're at minus 78 db Minus 78 dB noise level. That's pretty pretty good. It's better. Uh, you could sort of argue it, but it, it's better than a Type 2, but only just. It's a lot better than a Type 1. So overall, is there a, a big advantage to using this tape compared to a normal Type 2? Well, it has the ability to go plus which a chrome, bass of chrome, you can't go plus. So it has the ability to go plus. It's not going to give you the benefits that a proper metal, with metal bias and everything would give you, but it's doing okay. It's quiet, that's the main thing. And yeah, if you can get it one that's going to play properly, you've got yourself a good tape. Whether it's worth the money, I don't know. It depends what you can get them for. I wouldn't spend, personally, having seen those figures, I wouldn't spend more on this because it's got the word metal on it than getting a good BASF or um, the TDK Chrome, one of the better Chrome ones. It's The results aren't that much better, if at all. In fact, the harmonic distortion on this is not as good as, as on the BASF True Chromes. But it pays your money, it takes choices. And uh, overall, it's not, it's certainly not a bad tape if you get one that will play properly. Watch my next video for what I did to make this work, and I'll see you there. Like, subscribe if you've got anything from this. If you've got any questions, please put them through. It's no problem, I'll get back to you. Thanks a lot. Bye bye.